My name is Sheldon Smith. This is going to be, I guess, what they talk about in Australia, a walkabout, um, because um, the folks that are doing this have labored most of today to bring this stuff out to you, which is, frankly, nothing short of phenomenal. Someone pointed out to me on a back table over there um, is, what's Prell's first name? It escapes me. No, 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 the, the guy who owned the Aladdin. Milton Prell, there's a business card from Milton Prell over there when he was the executive director of another casino, which means it predates all the ownerships of all the casinos that he owned, and this paper stuff is phenomenal. We're going to be hearing from Kerry Burke. Kerry, raise your hand. We're going to be hearing from Cameron Kessinger. Raise your hand. We're going to be hearing from Don. Where are you? Don Dernan. And they're not going to talk a lot, I don't think. If they want to, they can. And you can ask them questions at, at any time you want to. But what's really important is to walk around and look at this stuff because, as most of us in this hobby recognize, the history of Nevada during and before and after legalized gambling is disappearing as they blow up hotel after hotel. And some of the stuff in this room is just like, it's extraordinary. So without further ado, Carrie, you're going to go first? And you can turn it over to the next one and then turn the audience loose to do their walking. Thank you for coming. Well, I, some of you probably know me from uh, being a chip and token collector for the last umpteen years. I'm a life member of the CC and GTCC and uh, thoroughly love it, as you can tell. Uh, I've been collecting chips and tokens uh, for a while, and uh, it's just been a fun, fun hobby. And, uh, I, if you've been in the showroom and talked to the dealers and talked to the other people, you know that the kind of people that are in this hobby are the neatest people you can run across. You know, you could go a lot of places and never find... I always tell this story about you go to a coin show and you, you watch the dealers at a coin show and they're back behind the tables and he's saying, do you think this is a uncirculated do you think this and you know everything is really secretive and they're looking at coins and it's a big secret uh, you go to the chip show guys are back there saying have you got this one here with the you know the car on it and blah 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 blah, blah. you know everybody is trading information there's no secrets we're not trying to keep stuff from each other if you got a chip and a guy's interested in the chip and and he asks you a question, you say, sure, yeah, let's look it up. You know, get the chip rack or something out and look it up. They're really, uh, just camaraderie among the people is totally different than any of the other hobbies that I've been in, and it, that's what makes it so fun. Well, I, I collected the chips and tokens for a long time. Then I started getting swizzle sticks, cards, dice, mugs, glasses, ashtrays, and it just got to where it was kind of, you know, got carried away. Well, my wife and I sat up at the shows for quite a few years, and uh, we did a couple of the uh, Las Vegas Antique Bottle and Collectibles Club shows also. I belonged to that. And uh, we sold a, a lot of stuff at those shows, got rid of the dice and the cards and the cups and the mugs and the glasses because they were breakable. And it got down to where I really liked the history of some of these casinos. You know, because the gaming industry does just, just not seem to be interested in their own history at all. They're, they could care less. They implode it, they throw it away, they haul it to the landfill, and nobody seems to care a darn thing about it. Thank God for the people at the Neon Museum. They salvaged some of our history. But a whole lot of it went down the drain before we realized where it was going, you know. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I started collecting this stuff, the fact that if you had a chip and it said uh, the Golden Nugget, Las Vegas, Nevada, and that was it. But if you got a pad of matches from the Golden Nugget and it said 500 air-conditioned rooms, go to the Excalibur Bar, uh, go to the uh, uh, Pow Wow Buffet and have dinner. You know, there was a lot of things even on a match pack. So I thought, wow, I'm going to start collecting these matches. There's a whole lot of history and information on these matches. So that's I started matches. Well, then I realized that the hotel brochures had a certain amount of information that was more than you got from the hotel themselves. Uh, next thing, I'd be sitting in the Kino parlor playing a Kino ticket. I'd start reading the Kino instructions, and there was a lot of information in the Kino instructions. So I thought, wow, all this paper is just sitting around, and when everybody's done with it, they're going to pitch it out, and that'll be it. So I thought, I'm going to start picking up this paper stuff now and then. 
And I did. And I, then I started getting some really great pictures. And I started meeting people who were in the same thing I am. They really, you know, they really liked the history of the casinos. Uh, Don Dernan used to live here in Las Vegas. He lives in Florida now, but uh, he's a serious chip collector, postcard collector, and, uh, and memorabilia collector of gaming industry. And uh, we have several friends that are doing the same thing. I, I told people the other night uh, that thank God for Jim Marsh and uh, some of these guys that are buying old slot machines and old casinos and fixing them up and rejuvenating them instead of tearing them down and building another one because our history is getting wiped out and and it's really this is a you go around the world there's no no place like Las Vegas the history of how it came about and how it happened and how it got rolling I have a I have a magazine let's see if I can figure out where it's at you want to take a look at you want to take a look at this uh, it's a life magazine it might be back on that table back there right here yeah Life, Life magazine, it has the picture of the Moulin Rouge dancing girls. That's 1955 when the Moulin Rouge opened on the west side of Las Vegas. First black night club, the first strip style hotel. Well, it was really popular. A lot of the entertainers, when they got off working at the strip, went to the Moulin Rouge for jam sessions till 2 and 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning. And it was a jumping, really neat place. Had gambling. Uh, it was really great. I think if they had a little better management job, it might still be here today. But anyway, one of the funny things you read here is Las Vegas. Is the boom overextended? <laughs> so, you know, it's things like that that are kind of amazing. Uh, everybody judged us as being a flash in the pan, and here we are. And we're buying and selling properties on the strip for billions of dollars, and Ma Wall Street is going, how did that happen, you know? So the, our history is a lot more interesting now that we know more about it. And so I just started saving all this paper stuff and preserving the history, and uh, that's how I got into collecting paper. Did you want to say something, Sam? Yes, I don't know when the last time I wrote that story, but it points out that they just opened Sunset Boulevard, and they just opened Sunset Boulevard, Oh, here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and property prices, uh, an acre of land on the strip is going all over the Yeah, I'll be darned. Yeah, Sam uh, borrowed this magazine. He had a, he's a real estate man here in Las Vegas, and he uh, had a convention of real estate people. He wanted to take this magazine and show it to the people at the uh, real estate convention in Las Vegas as the boom uh, uh, overextended. Anyway, I, there's not much that I can say unless I go into the history, and it would be, you know, forever and ever. And and all that stuff. The only thing I can say is this. When you're preserving this paper stuff, you put it in plastic pages to kind of take care of it. All of these placemats and things that I have here are laminated so that people can pick them up and look at them and they're not going to damage them or mess them up at all. But when you handle the pages, sometimes there's two brochures in one page. Try to keep them from lopping over each other so that you can look at them. But make sure that you look at as many pages as you can because I've done this for like 30 years and I started collecting as I got it. And I got plastic pages and three ring binders and I put it in there. But it's not in any order. I don't have the silver slipper from this book. There may be two more in another book somewhere else. It's impossible to, it would take me a month, a month of solid office work just to get everything collated to where it ought to be. So look in the books, you may see a funky looking picture of downtown and the next page might be uh, an El Rancho check made out to one of the entertainers, you know, so look carefully, but you'll get a whole lot of history in this room and uh, maybe I can get some of you interested in collecting paper because it's really fun. You really get a lot of history. You learn a lot about, uh, I also have a lot of Northern Nevada too, so take a look at everything. Hello. I was telling the lady uh, that's doing the filming there a while ago, uh, when, I, when I was uh, talking to her, I said, one thing that you can do that your kids might get a kick out of, you know, if you have uh, young, young kids in your family, is whenever you go in a hotel, go up to the front desk and say, I want to write back to my relatives and tell them that I'm here at the Aladdin. Could I have a couple of sheets of stationery and an envelope? And they'll give you one. 
And, uh, and they're happy to do that. That's part of their PR program is to have stationery with their name on it so people can write home. If you, if you get plastic pages and put a sheet of stationery in an envelope in every, every hotel that you go to, you can give some kid with a three ring binder full of hotel stationery that's really collectible and people really marvel at it, uh, the fact that you did it. But anyway, it doesn't cost a thing. Just the plastic pages is all. That's one thing. But you gotta, you gotta have kind of like a mental idea. When, you go, when, I go, when I go into a hotel, if I sit down and play a Kino ticket, I put a, I put a brochure of the Kino instructions and a couple of blank tickets in my, in my actually in my wife's purse. <laughs> but anyway, I've been doing this for years and I have pages and pages of Kino tickets and instructions and stuff that I've just, this stuff's there for people to pick up and take and I pick it up and take it. Hotel brochures, all that stuff. And I don't want to talk on and on and on. In order to enjoy this hobby, you've got to see the paper, and that's what you need to be doing instead of listening to me. So Cameron is another collector of paper. He has some special kind of paper, uh, cocktail napkins, coasters, and things like that, some really neat stuff from old hotels. Cameron Kessinger. <laughs> Thank you. When I go into a, a casino, I go to the bar and grab a stack of napkins about yay big on my way out. So um, I started collecting more than 20 years ago. If anybody remembers the uh, Harvey's before it blew up, uh, they used to have at the entrance to one of the restaurants a roulette table felt on the wall. And there used to be casino chips on all of the corners and from all over the place, real rare stuff. And you, you, on the way in, you'd look at that and go, Whoa, that's really cool. And that's what got me started into collecting chips. Um, 20 years ago, you could go to the Bellflower Casino Chip Show before there were conventions up here, and you could walk around for about $100, and you could walk out with a bag of chips with landmark tower chips in it, with, with decent chips. Now, $100 gets you a couple oddball chips, nothing real good. But paper items, you can walk around, and for $100, you can walk out with a stack of some, some decent things. Um, so I've put together a number of displays out here that are collages of, of paper items. And uh, my hope is that you guys will look at that and go, whoa. You know, like I did at, at that roulette table felt with, with the chips, you know, this is kind of neat. And, uh, you know, everything from sugar packets, sugar cubes, toothpicks inside of uh, advertising wrappers, brochures. Um, you know, I, I kid people when they say, well, what is it that you don't collect? If the toilet seat thing that went over it saying that it was clean had advertising on it, I would collect that. You know, so um, I hope you guys enjoy it. And, and uh, you know, there are things you can walk around the room and, and add to your collection that aren't expensive and, and you don't have to justify to your spouse why you've just spent a bunch of money on it. Um, I think Don has uh, some interesting things that he wants to talk about, and hope you guys enjoy it. Yeah, my name is Don Dernan. This is actually the second club I belong to. I belong to a club that before this one even existed. It was out of Reno, and the gentleman had it. He did everything on a piece of paper that he would mail out every so often. And we got about 60 people in it, and he thought it was too much, so he disbanded it. So then later when they wanted me to join this club, I thought, well, it's not going to last. It's like the other one, you know. And now look where we're at now. But my intention was I was going to dealing school at the strip dealer school over by the Sahara across from the Jolly Trolley and that. And I was <clears throat> figured, well, I'm going to be a crap dealer, so I'll go out and start collecting dice. So I'd go around to the gift shops, and I would get one die from each gift shop for about 50 cents. And I was going to put them in a, in a plastic shadow box. Well, I didn't want them to fall out, so I figured, well, I'll go get a piece of styrofoam and stick in the back. So when I was over at one of the local arts and crafts stores, uh, somebody had brought back a picture frame that had 100 center insert chips in it, and they glued it onto a piece of green paper. And a couple of them had slipped down. So he brought it back to have it fixed again. And I thought, well, that's kind of neat. I said, I think I'll see if I can get a chip and a dice and a matchbook and a swizzle stick, and I'll put them in shadow boxes, you know. So I was living in a small studio at that time. All I had room in the place was for a TV. Well, I'm not going to spend all day in there, so I would go and wander in the casinos. And I would go up to the front desk, and I would, you know, pick up some of the stuff there. I'd go back to the Kino Lounge, or I'd go to the bar, or I'd go to... And you could get all this stuff for nothing, you know. And to me, collecting this stuff, if I go personally get it, uh, when I'm looking through the stuff and I pick it up and I see it and I say, hey, I remember winning this chip off the table or something like that, or 
I remember talking to some interesting people from out of town or, uh, you know, go up to the landmark or stuff like that. So I thought it has, has more value if you personally touch it or something like that, you know, more intrinsic value. So then I just started collecting everything. Those photographs there, when they first came out with the 110 or the 35 millimeter throwaway cameras, remember, you used to turn the whole camera in. Okay, that's what those are. I went down and I shot those, and then I thought, well, why not go back 10 years later and I'll shoot the same shot and see how much difference there is. <clears throat> so I've got books and books and books that show every 10 years what these places look like. I tried to stand in the same spot, which is kind of hard to do, but I didn't, I didn't blow them all up. But that's some of the downtown places that are, you know, the Fremont experience is over the top of it now. Uh, Miss Lucy's is gone. One of my other ones dropped down. They won't stick up on that stupid wall. But, uh, and then the matchbooks, I blew those up to give you guys a little better idea of what they look like. The black and white photos, they're all from downtown. Okay, that's the park there that he's holding there. That's now the Main Street Station. That was a Holiday International at one time. That's how they changed. They just changed the outside of them and they use the same building. So it's the same thing. But you can go in and get that, collect that stuff. The black and white photos there are, are frashers. They're called frashers. The gentleman used to take the original photo and he'd go to a business, business or whatever. And he'd say, I've taken this picture. Are you interested in purchasing some to sell to your customers? And they would say, yeah, you know, how many can you give me? And he'd say, well, I'll give you 100 or whatever. And they'd sell them for 10, 15 cents or whatever in the racks. Well, he was from California. And he went all over the United States and Hawaii and everything and, and filmed mainly black and whites. OK, when he got sick, either his estate or whatever, they donated it to a museum in California. And they kept him for a number of years. Well, they were doing a renovation and needed the space. So all of the originals and all the negatives, they threw out. So a lot of those are one of a kinds. So you can still run. You can buy them on eBay uh, anywhere from $9.99 to, I've, I've seen some of them for $1,000, you know, that some dealers want. So it just, it just depends on what, what the scene is and what it in, entices and shows. And postcards, matchbooks, you know, everything. There's so much other than the really, really expensive stuff. The expensive stuff is nice. but you know, my way of thinking of it is I can spend $1,000 on one chip, but look at how many $5 chips I can go out on the strip and get for that same $1,000. And who knows, 20 years down the road, they may be worth $1,000 if, if the places aren't around. You know, so you got to kind of plan on, on a little bit of what you're doing. There goes another one. But uh, it's, it's a very interesting hobby. You meet interesting people, and it's a lot of fun. And it doesn't have to be expensive. You know, it can be as, spend as much as you want. And someday, it'll be worth a lot of money. And that, that's all I got to say. You guys go around, look at it, enjoy it, and have fun collecting. Thank you. OK, this is one of the collections that I have. And it's, I started just, uh, a fellow that was at our show had uh, some uh, placemats that he had laminated. And I, I said, how come you laminated them? And he said, well, that way people can pick them up and hold them and touch them, and it's not going to hurt them, you know. And I thought, hey, that's a great idea. So I went in my stuff and got uh, some of my old ones. This one here is from the Moulin Rouge, long time old joint. Uh, this happened to be a really pretty one from the Texas Station, uh, just the, the quality of the picture is nice. Uh, this is, the, this is a place that was out on the Boulder Highway called Old Vegas. It was like the Last Frontier Village used to be at the Last Frontier Hotel. And there's a kind of an aerial artist concept of it. It was like an old western village and they had uh, carnival rides and uh, pony rides and all kinds of stuff. And uh, it was kind of an old western place like Bonnie Springs, you know, sort of. Anyway, and then I got carried away and this is a, this is a, Copa, a Copa room from the Sands Hotel menu. And uh, here's uh, one. This is the, a dual casino. This is the Joker's Wild in Henderson and the El Dorado in Henderson. Here's one from the Aladdin. I think this is, uh, I believe that's an older one from, or I mean a newer one from the Aladdin. <coughs> here's the boardwalk with the famous clown. This one here is from the Silver Slipper. This is an old timer. Uh, a buddy of mine was a chef there for a long time. and. Uh, he had all kinds of bargain meals, and boy, people used to just flock in there in the evening and, uh, and uh, you know, eat after they get off of work and stuff like that. That was downtown. Diamond Jim's had a whole bunch of tickets in a, in a book called a fun book. You could go down to, 
to downtown to uh, Diamond Gyms and Vatican Club. They had a 99 cent buffet upstairs. Drinks were uh, on tickets, two for one, and a lot of working people went there after they got off of work. That's a placemat from the landmark. Uh, here's one from the sands, and the thing I like about a lot of these is here's here's uh, the name of the garden room. Uh, the Kino, 97%, they have all kinds of information on them, you know, which is historical information. That's what's the most fun. Here's one from the old Last Frontier Hotel, Western Village. That was, uh, that was a guy named Doby Doc, was a wealthy, wealthy old man that liked to collect antique Western memorabilia, and he had a whole little town alongside of the Last Frontier Hotel with uh, carnival rides, bump em cars, uh, he had a little burrow ride that I used to sell him a burrow or two now and then. This is from uh, Reno and Lake and uh, Topaz Lake. There's a lodge at Topaz Lake called Topaz Lodge. It was both, both owned by Pick Hobson, a uh, hotel casino owner in the Riverside in Reno. And he owned at the one. This one here is from Winnemucca. That's kind of an old one. That's really, or from Lovelock, I'm sorry. This is the Big Meadow Hotel from Lovelock. That's an old timer there uh, from way back. Here's an old one from the Golden Nugget. Kind of kind of their original motif, lots of wild looking old western stuff. This one's kind of neat because it uh, has uh, the Sun Coast, every one of the restaurants that's there now. And you know, you'll, uh, five years from now, somebody will say, oh, we ate in the, uh, in the Cafe Siena. And they say, where was that at? Oh, gee, uh, darn if I can remember. You know, well, there it is. It was at the Sun Coast. Same way with the Orleans. Uh, all the names of the restaurants are on the uh, on the placemat, so it's kind of a kind of a nice thing to know the names of all the restaurants because they change. Here's Arizona Charlie's right here. It has uh, China Charlie's, uh, the Naughty Ladies Saloon, the Wild West Buffet, and the food cart. And that, those are all changed now. There is no Latin, not, Naughty Ladies. There's no China Charlie's. Uh, the Wild West Buffet, I think, is the San Francisco Buffet, and uh, uh, let's see, the Yukon Grill is the, some kind of steakhouse. I can't remember the name. Anyway, they, they change these things, and you never hear of them again, so it's kind of nice to have something with a piece of history on it, you know. This is the opening placemat for Barley's Casino. Uh, they had Blue Diamond Beer, uh, Red Rock Beer, Black Mountain, Barley's, and... Uh, baby sister just showed up. <laughs> uh, that's a place was downtown. I just, that was an old piece of paper, so I just laminated it because it was kind of neat. It's from uh, McClaney's Carousel. That was down at First and Fremont. It was a lot of places uh, after it was a drugstore. Here's the Algiers, uh, Joe W. Brown's Horseshoe. That's when Mr. Binion was up north uh, visiting the, the uh, Nevada State Prison, and Joe W. Brown substituted for him and ran the casino while he was gone. Uh, this is one of my favorite pictures because I was a young kid. I used to go to the Last Frontier Hotel. This picture right here. I used to go to the Last Frontier Hotel. And the western village that I was talking about is, this is the Silver Slipper right here. And all of this area right here was the western village. And they had merry-go-round, bump em cars, all, all kinds of old west. Had an old west saloon, had a gun store. Uh, the Silver Slipper was an old west motif too. And this was part of the Last Frontier. At one time, they had jalopy races here. That's the Last Frontier Sports Drome, where they had jalopy races years ago when I was a kid. If, if this picture, picture was a little bigger, I have another picture that shows it, but if, there was a, if it was a little bigger, there's a Motor View Drive-In was back here, right there too. But the thing that I like the best is I told umpteen friends of mine that at one time there was a circle of Conestoga wagons at the Last Frontier Village. And I never, ever could find a picture of it to prove it, but that one right there is it. All of those Conestoga wagons, they're full-size Conestoga wagons like the Pioneers used, and every one of them had the name of a different western state on it, Montana and Idaho and Utah and all that, so they were kind of neat when I was a kid, and I just, I told people about it, and they kind of looked at me funny, you know, 15, 16 Conestoga wagons, <laughs> really? <laughs> this is the original shot of the the El Rancho Vegas, and if you look back, there's, there's nothing around here. This is the strip, two lanes wide. And if you look right back there, that's the Union Pacific. Those are freight cars going down the Union Pacific Railroad, and there's not a other thing around. <laughs> Isn't that a neat picture? Let's see. Uh, there's a picture of the El Rancho, a little better, a little just 
what these are is copies of my my buddy's pictures that he lets me copy them and and uh, this one right here is the El Rancho Vegas Hotel and this is hardly ever do you ever see you see this part of the El Rancho but you hardly ever see this back here these are the cottages that were rented out as hotel rooms by the El Rancho Vegas they had a lot of cottages that they if you look right here these are cars parked in front of the cottages and uh, they they rented those out because the building itself didn't have a whole heck of a lot of hotel rooms maybe uh, 30 30 hotel rooms at the most and the reason I like this picture is because that right there is the Tower Auto Court and that's the first place we stayed when we came to Las Vegas in 1945. <laughs> My father drove in there and we had a bunch of stuff up on top of the car and tore the lights down. <laughs> so he got out and fixed the lights and they said, hey, you got to stay in Las Vegas. We need guys that know electricity. You better stay here. And we've been here ever since. Anyway, it's so fun collecting paper. Here's a brochure from the old Thunderbird Hotel. Uh, Dixieland night at the, at the Thunderbird. They had... Uh, Here's, here's the ink spots uh, appearing at the Thunderbirds. It's a brochure. The Dansations was a, a dancing group of ladies, like Can Can girls. Uh, it's so fun collecting paper stuff. It's really a kick. Those because are the real you, you ink a, spots, too, aren't Yeah, they? yeah, that's the real <laughs> ink spots. Yeah, yeah, you get a lot of history when you do this. This is interesting because this is Thunderbirds Downs. It was a racetrack behind the Thunderbird Hotel. And here are all of the people who were on the board, the Nevada Racing Commission, and if you, you recognize a lot of names, there are people that uh, were uh, uh, politicians and stuff like that in uh, Las Vegas, so years ago they were on the board, the racing board. Here's a, this is another thing I was talking about, the, the, the hotel, this is the Navajo Room, that's from the Thunderbird Hotel, the powwow cocktail at the Navajo Room. <laughs> I come up with any kind of a catchy thing that would uh, sell you on the idea. That was a motel down on Las Vegas Boulevard, the Lotus Inn, uh, halfway between Fremont and the Strip. And this is stuff I've just collected from the El Rancho. There's a napkin and a, and a, I think that's a table tent that went in the restaurant or something. This is the mid, what's that say, Night Owl Show. That was a late, late show that they advertised uh, for the rounders that were out scouting around at night. Uh, Here's an old uh, napkin from the Boulder Club downtown. That's that's really a nice piece of paper. A lot of a lot of old timers would like to have that because it's just old, old Boulder Club stuff. Anyway, these books are full of. Here's the Mapes Hotel. What a beautiful place that was in Reno. Isn't that a beautiful yeah. building? It was. A, there's two or three hotels in Las Vegas. The old hotels, the uh, Humboldt Hotel up north, and uh, and the Mapes and a couple others were beautiful, beautiful buildings. Uh, let's see, Westwood Ho, uh, Silverton, the Plaza. We got lots and lots of uh, these brochures from hotels. They're really neat to collect, and they have tons and tons of histor historic information on them. You know, here's a picture of the Bonanza Hotel. That's where Bally sits now. That was uh, the Bonanza Hotel, and then it was the MGM Grand, and uh, and uh, now it's Bally's. But it was that whole piece of property there. Actually, the MGM Grand was on the corner, and the, and the Bonanza was kind of behind it a little bit. But anyway, it, uh, it's that whole corner. Here's the place that was out at State Line. Hmm, if I can get it out of here. It was called Cactus Cates. It was right, right, uh, there's a little tiny building. It's just a little dinky casino called Cactus Cates. And uh, it was... Uh, Right at, right at the state line, uh, coming from California to here, I think there was, uh, I forget the name of it, Buffalo Bills or something like that, and Cactus Cates were two places that people stopped. Here's uh, Pops Oasis, which was out in Jean, Nevada. And uh, let's see what else I got here. Oh, this was, this was the Lady Luck, and it's actually the, the Hacienda Hotel being built, but it was called the Lady Luck for a little while, and then they changed it to the Hacienda and the Lady of Luck ended up downtown. Uh, if you notice, this name right here is Homer. That was Homer Rissman. He was an architect in Las Vegas, one of the, one of the really great architects of Las Vegas. He designed the Hilton. He designed uh, oodles and oodles of buildings. And UNLV has all of his blueprints in their special collections, which is kind of nice. I don't know if you can see that or not. That was downtown, the Gambler's Hall of Fame. 
It's an old, old casino. It didn't last very long. Uh, there's the Algiers right after it first got opened. It's kind of a... You can tell by the old cars that it was uh, back in the early, early 50s. It was kind of a local hangout for people after... Uh, after working on the strip, they'd go in there and have a beer, and it was kind of a cool, nice, dark cocktail lounge, and they all hung out in there and kibbutzed with each other. That's an old building that was the Clark County Jail many, many years ago. It was a, it was a jail, it was a library, and I think it was a constable's office, all three at different times. Uh, you know, they just used the buildings whenever they needed them, or if somebody got a better, better building, then somebody else would move into it. Uh, let's see, that's the Marino here. There's a great picture of the Tropicana. This is the Tropicana Hotel, and that's the Tropicana Golf Course. And these are a couple of trailer parks down on uh, on Tropicana Avenue, but you can see all of the open dirt there. There's not a thing in there. Later on, there was a lot of people. This is the original Santa Fe Saloon, Santa Fe Club, in Goldfield, Nevada. It's been opened continuously since 1906. There's a monument out in front of it right here now that the E. Clampus Vitus Club put in there commemorating the fact that it has been open all those years. Anyway, it's loaned by, owned by a local uh, car dealer here in Las Vegas named Jim Marsh who owns a couple of other casinos around the state and we really think a lot of him because he's preserving history. You know, he really, he, he buys old uh, artifacts and stuff for historical purposes and that's saving history that's a, that's a black and white picture of the same same place I just uh, this is a picture of the MGM fire in 1980 it looks awful doesn't it mm. Mm -hmm. there's another picture of it from farther away I don't know if the lights good for that here's a picture of the helicopter and the people out on the balconies uh, trying to tie sheets together or whatever they could think of to get out of the hotel. They were really panicked, which I can understand. I think about 80 people died in that fire. It was really a horrible thing. That's just a uh, picture this way of the... There's a helicopter on the roof taking people off and see all the windows open and people waving bedclothes and all that. This is a picture... I'll show you, let me show you this picture first. No, this is the one. Uh, I, I can't remember the year, but anyway, some screwball guy built a bomb and rolled it, it looked like a computer, he rolled it into Harvey's Casino at Lake Tahoe. That was in 1980. 1980, okay. Because we were there. Were you? Yeah. Anyway, they, they, he told somebody and they evacuated everybody that they could. These are the only cars mm -hmm. that they couldn't get a hold of the people. Anyway, they stood several blocks away, and when that blast went off, it scattered dirt and everything for two city blocks. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, nobody got hurt, but however, it damaged the daylights out of the casino. So you can see the parking lot's pretty empty, which was great. They got had time to empty it out. But that's the aftermath. It blew dirt and stuff clear across the street to the other uh, casinos and stuff. It was really a mess. Mm -hmm. So that's... Uh, that's some of the picture history I got. I got a lot. It's so fun collecting the paper because you get all this history, you know. Right. Uh, for instance, this is something that even kids could do. I, I, I've told people at some of my seminars that people ought to do this for their kids because it's fun. When you go into a hotel, you go up to the front desk and you say, uh, do you have a couple of sheets of stationery and an envelope that I can mail a letter back to my friends and tell them that I was here? And they'll give them to you at the front desk. They have it. Okay, if you go get a, these plastic pages, put an envelope and a piece of stationery in there from every hotel, and it doesn't cost you a darn thing except a plastic page. And if you, you know, if you get kids to doing this, they've got a really neat collection of history. Here's one from the El Rancho Vegas. Isn't that pretty? That's the stationery and the... And the the scenery that they put on there was really classy. Anyway, it's a fun thing to do, and it doesn't cost anything. All you got to do when you're in there, you ask them for a couple of sheets of stationery and an envelope, and almost every hotel will give you give them to you. See, there's there's the King Eight, the Imperial Palace, the J.W. Marriott, the Hilton, the Hacienda, Golden Nugget, three different colors and times. <laughs> anyway, it's a fun. It's just fun to collect that. There's the dunes. Lots, lots of. Uh, Hotel stationery. It's really cheap. A cheap hobby. It really is. These are all coasters. Uh, my friend Cameron 
which you interviewed early, uh, is uh, really into collecting coasters and, uh, and cocktail napkins and things like that. But I, I like it too, so I, I have a few in my collection. It's just one of those things. Let's see. I gotta... And this is this is another aspect of collecting. These are these are coupon books that the casinos all over the state of Nevada give out. They're called fun books or uh, tourist uh, books, you know, whatever, pleasure packs. they got every kind of name you can think of. And all, in these fun books are pages and pages of free drink, good for a souvenir keychain, good for a buffet dinner or a two-for-one buffet dinner, something like that. Anyway, these are all, some of these are, are points that you get to buy things in the gift shop. This is a super fun book from the Skyline. That's another one of Jim Marsh's casinos. Uh, the Jolly Trolley. Uh, the Silver City, the Lady Luck, the Landmark. Uh, it, the big casinos had them. The little casinos had them. Everybody had them. And they were good for everything from a drink to a free dinner. Uh, it just depends, you know. Uh, here's, here's two more sections of fun books, all kinds of different ones. Some of these are just uh, uh, one-page coupon books. But you, you took it up to the, to the gift counter, I mean the, the counter there, and they would give you a fun book. This is Bob Stupak's Million Dollar Museum. That's from way long time ago. Uh, I don't see if you can see Bob Stupak's name on there or not. I don't know if we can or not. Anyway, it was the Million Dollar Museum. He, he had a. It was right where the Stratosphere sits now. It was later on his uh, Vegas casino. Uh, let's see. This is kind of an interesting piece of paper for us paper collectors. Those are totalizer tickets from the Thunderbird Downs Racetrack, which was right in the back of the Thunderbird Hotel. Uh, those were, if you made a bet, those were the receipts that you got for every dollar you made a bet. Uh, here's an interesting one. This is a guest pass from the MGM High Lie in Las Vegas. The MGM Grand, the original MGM Grand, had a High Lie front on. And people would go in and watch the high lie and bet on the games. It was really, really interesting. And I'm wearing you down. <laughs> I'm about to run out of steam here. Okay, all of these pictures, can I talk? Yeah. All of these pictures hung from all the ones that are in the wooden frames right here, hung in Tony Roma's restaurant on East Sahara Avenue for years and years and years. And, uh, some of them are uh, Vegas pictures, some of them are from Goldfield and Tonopah and uh, the original Little Church of the West. Anyway, they, they all hung in Tony Roma's restaurant at one time, and uh, Tony Roma's decided to redesign the interiors of all of their restaurants. So they removed all of these from the, from the restaurant walls, and it just so happened that the lady who's the general manager knows that I love Las Vegas uh, memorabilia and pictures and stuff like that. So she made sure that I got these pictures. Well, they t when the construction guys tore them off of the wall, they kind of ruined the backs of a lot of them. But anyway, my wife and I put new backs on all of them and took old English and polished the frames and fixed them up pretty nice. So I, I had this made up so that somebody would know. It says, these frame pictures are from the walls of Tony Roma's restaurant where they've been hanging for several decades for the local clientele that dined there. This location of Tony Roma's is the place where suspected mobster Argent Corporation officer and Stardust manager Lefty Rosenthal's Cadillac Eldorado was bombed in the parking lot in October of 1982. Tony Roma's is located at 620 East Sahara, three blocks behind the Sahara Hotel. And that's where all of these fabulous pictures come. Some of them are, some of them are celebrities and others are just uh, really neat old Vegas pictures, but uh, super, super pictures. So I'm tickled to death to have them. I, I am delighted and, and be able to bring them and show them to people, too. That's the nice part. Uh, a lot of this other stuff down here farther. Some kind of play. Uh, this here is some Rancho, El Rancho Vegas memorabilia. This particular piece of paper right here is the original crap license from the El Rancho Vegas Hotel. It's made out to El Ranco Incorporated, uh, Maurice Cattleman, president, and it's signed by uh, a guy named uh, Sloan, I think it is, and another guy named Mally Malby, something like that, some of the local uh, 
politicians that were on the uh, tax commission that probably granted them that license. And this is a cute little thing here. This is one of my favorites. This is a wooden menu from the breakfast at the last or at the uh, El Rancho Vegas. And that, this is the breakfast. It says morning, morning Padna. And uh, all kinds of really fabulous meals for <laughs> less than two or three bucks. Prices were fabulous. <laughs> anyway, here's a bunch of uh, El Rancho Vegas memorabilia. People really like it because it was the first strip hotel. Here's the shoehorns, there's a key tag, there's an ashtray and a set of matches. A couple more key tags. A couple of different napkins, a shoe shine rag, a hotel brochure, and uh, this is a patch off of a, off of a kitchen worker's uniform, uh, that El Rancho patch. I bought the old uniforms and took the patches off and put them on golf hats. <laughs> and uh, moving right along, here's some more memorabilia. Here's an El Rancho memorial menu from uh, New Year's Day in, uh, let's see, January 1, 1944. And uh, here's a Life magazine, 1955. The newest in Las Vegas, the girls at the Moulin Rouge. That was the grand opening of the Moulin Rouge, the first black uh, nightclub uh, strip style hotel that, uh, in Las Vegas. One of the funny things on there says, Las Vegas, is the boom overextended? <laughs> I guess it wasn't true. Anyway, here's a place that people in Las Vegas years, to, years ago used to go, Twin Lakes Lodge. It's now Lorenzi Park. But at one time it was open to the public for swimming and boating and, and uh, picnicking. And uh, at night they had a dance pavilion. And people, people would go out there because the water, the, the air off of the water was cool, you know. And uh, so they'd go out there and visit. Uh, this was a movie that was shot in Las Vegas. Uh, called Hel Dorado, and because of the fact that uh, Mrs. Roy Rogers, Dale Evans, was a little bit on the churchy side, uh, they changed the name from H E L L D O R A D O to H E L D O, Hel Dorado. <laughs> Later on, it went back to H E L L, but anyway, Dale Evans was happy and, uh, and partake, partook in, in being in the movie. And the rest of this stuff is just stuff that's so fun to collect uh, chips. We really collect chips and tokens is what we do the most of, but uh, uh, we collect cards, dice, uh, ashtrays, swizzle sticks. Here's a whole bunch of different matches from, uh, from different casinos that's down through the years. Uh, I, Sheldon's over here looking at a, a, a book of... Uh, it's okay. I think a little bit. Sheldon looking at these matches is these. There's all kinds of matches. People collect matches uh, all the time. All these are, are special matches from the casinos down through the years. But these right here are kind of particularly nice. They call them feature matches. And these are the ones that have. See the picture of the Sahara Hotel on the matches. And here's uh, El Rancho had uh, these cowgirls on them. Uh, there are some other ones here. Uh, there's a roulette wheel on the Golden Nugget one. This is from Harold's Club. There's a roulette wheel from Harold's Club. Here's a kind of a western, I mean a gambling motif, game, cards and so forth on the westerner. Th those are called feature matches. They're a lot, a lot of fun to collect. This is kind of a funny one here. Harold's Club, I was there. The guy's bare naked with a barrel around him. <laughs> Anyway, uh, here's uh, El Rancho Vegas with the dancing girls on it. Oh, I'm sorry, that was the last frontier. Yeah. I have to turn them over to look at and see. Anyway, the feature matches are kind of neat. Uh, here's the Thunderbird, old Thunderbird matches, the Mapes Hotel, kind of a uh, Art Deco style artwork for the, for the uh, Mapes Hotel. The Bingo. That was a lucky strike downtown, the bingo uh, game there. It was a bingo parlor. LSMFJ, lucky strike means faster jackpots. That was kind of a takeoff on the smoking uh, uh, advertisement that they had. Uh, let's see, here's some pretty ones. There's some with the Thunderbirds on the matches. Looks kind of neat. These are kind of cool. They're, uh, this is from Joby's Monte Carlo at Lake Tahoe. This is from Oliver's at Lake Tahoe. That's a Benny Binion uh, horseshoe with a $100 Benny Binion chip on it. Uh, these are from uh, Cottontail Ranch 
in middle Nevada, Joe W. Brown's horseshoe. That's when he was watching the store. And the old Northern Club, that was the first license in Clark County, Northern Club, Amy Stocker, and uh, a guy named Morgan had the first gaming license there in uh, Clark County. This is the Golden Slots, was right across the street. Carousel, Carousel was a whole lot of different things. It was the Silver Palace, the Carousel, the Gambler's Hall of Fame, Farron's Drugstore, <laughs> that's about, that about <laughs> 10 different things. Uh, anyway. You see the fun in collecting the matches is you get all this information. The phone number, 400 air conditioned rooms, the name of the cocktail lounge, uh, a lot of information comes. So if you're a historian or you're interested in history, you get a whole lot of history even on a pad of matches. So that's, that's the fun of collecting the matches. And then we collect pictures and postcards and, uh, and brochures from hotels, Kino tickets, Kino instructions all that kind of stuff. It's so fun because it's all information that someday is going to get lost. It seems like the gaming industry does not care about their history. And so uh, we do. We like the history so that's why we're saving all of this stuff is to preserve it. And I guess that's about it. Hi, I'm Cameron Kessinger and I've been in the club for maybe 20 years. I've been collecting for almost 25 years. Uh, my member number is 292, original member, and uh, one of my favorite things to collect are the odds and ends and the paper goods that are from the clubs. And so I've uh, put together a number of displays, and I hope uh, somebody will find it interesting and look at the display and go, gee, I've never seen that before. Isn't that cool? So uh, here's a few items that I've brought. Uh, one of my favorite areas to collect is uh, the Lake Tahoe area and uh, from the old Lake Tahoe clubs. And so I've put together a number of items. Um, one of my favorite things to collect are cocktail napkins, and so all of my displays will have quite a few of the cocktail napkins in there. Um, all the matchbooks and the cocktail napkins and coasters are all very colorful and, and uh, fairly hard to find. I um, have some items from the Tahoe Village and George's Gateway Club and um, Sahadi Brothers State Line Country Club. Um, all fairly difficult to find, but uh, kind of neat when you come across them. Um, also brochures and Kino related items, sugar packs, sugar cubes, um, the Harris menu is a children's menu with the elephant from uh, Harris in Lake Tahoe, that's kind of colorful and interesting. And then one of my favorite clubs is, was the Nevada Lodge, Nevada Club um, in Nevada Lodge up in uh, North Shore of Lake Tahoe. And so there's placemat and some odds and ends from there. Uh, old Cal Neva stuff with the, with the uh, pine cones on it. The, the pine cone logos are always fun to collect. Um, Frank Sinatra's uh, used to own the Cal Neva Lodge. And, and so uh, there's a couple of items with his name on there, which are kind of interesting. Every now and then you'll come across something that you just you don't see anything from. And so there's some stationery from the Tahoe Plaza in Lake Tahoe, which is kind of interesting. Or the Calneva when it was associated with the Calneva Biltmore as well. And this postcard shows the inside of the Calvada Lodge, so anybody who hasn't been in those clubs or wasn't around then can you pick up some postcards and they can see what it looked like on the inside. And then Reno items. Uh, Reno's fun because it's really old. There's a lot of really neat advertising from the Reno clubs. And, um, Lou Heimers did a lot of the advertising on, on the Reno club uh, advertisements. and So there's a number of items here with his advertising. Um, Doghouse stuff is, is very hard to find. Um, and it turns out there was the tro it became the Tropics, and so there's a couple of items here from both clubs, both ownerships. Matchbook covers and photo holders. Photo holders on the inside generally will have a picture, a souvenir picture from when they um, when they were there that night. And sometimes it shows the inside of the club and the gaming that was going on on it. And so there's a couple of neat things there. Also the matchbooks. Um, a lot of the matchbooks have you know, four-digit phone numbers on them, which show their age. Some interesting graphics. And again, the cocktail napkins have a lot of advertisement and a lot of color.
And then Nevada, again, Nevada club items I've always liked, so I, I keep an eye on that. Every now and then you'll find something that you never heard of before. So I, there's a card here from the 99 club which shows that there was gaming in, in Reno, and I can't find anything else that says what it was, but at least I have one item from there. Uh, the MAPES advertisements and logos are always fun to collect and colorful. And you have the sky room up on the top and, and a number of items from there. And collect every, anything that has casino advertising on it, you know, all the way down to toothpicks with uh, advertising on the wrappers, sugar packs again. Um, old menus, this is an interesting menu from the Palace Club in Reno in the shape of a slot machine. That's kind of neat. Some old, real old Reno items. Uh, again, one of my favorite clubs in Reno is the Club Fortune. It, it's one of the older clubs from the 1930s, and, and it catered to a lot of the wartime, uh, uh, or the veterans and the, and the servicemen that came into the club. Uh, a lot of their advertising is patriotic. And, and there's a number of interesting things from there. And it shows, the one picture I have does show the uh, outside and what it looked like. A number of the different advertisements. Uh, Merry-Go-Round Club, and that's one of the older clubs there too. What's interesting about this, this is a souvenir hold, photo holder, and the photo that was inside actually shows the gaming um, that took place in the gaming table. And if you look real close, the, the, the glass that's on the table, you can't see it real clear through here, but the glass on the table has a Merry-Go-Round logo on it. So tells us that it's out there, somebody's got it. Leon and Eddie's Club and the Blackout Bar. The Blackout in Reno uh, used to be owned by uh, Bill Hara, and uh, so that was one of his first uh, area or clubs in, in the Reno area. And the Stork Club in Reno is a hard to find item. And then uh, rural Nevada items that I have. Uh, the one item in the middle is a menu from the El Capitan in Hawthorne. If you find the, the casino chip with that on there, it, it runs you know, in excess of $1,000, but you can pick up a menu for you know, 10 or $15, so it's one way to get the advertising without spending a fortune. Um, you know, photographs, if you can find somebody who's got old photographs of, of some of the clubs. This is of the Gateway Club, um, George and Texas Gateway Club, not the one in Lake Tahoe. Um, and kind of neat logo on the outside with the uh, with the slot machine fascia on the on the building. Um, a number of old matchbooks and, and odds and ends. Decals from some of the clubs are kind of neat. And, and um, this one's from the Railroad Pass Casino uh, near Boulder Dam. Um, coupons. There's coupons that you could always get coupons for free nickels or uh, free gifts. And it, they kind of give a little bit of the history of the clubs and tell you what was going on at that time, some of the advertising on there. Brochures and uh, jackpot bags. Jackpot bags uh, used to be paper bags they used to pay off the jackpots in. And, and so um, they had neat advertising. And later they became jackpot cups. And so that was the precursor to that. And some Vegas items. Um, Obviously, everybody's heard of the Thunderbird and the Sahara and the Sands, but there are a number of obscure places uh, located. The Nevada Bar, um, uh, the Ewell, LL, that uh, people have heard of it. It's kind of hard to find items. Uh, the Red Rooster Nightclub is a real rare um, location. Uh, the Big Four uh, Club and Bar uh, had craps. They advertise uh, craps on their matchbook cover. The Cinnabar is hard to find something from. Uh, the Mission Bar, Napkin, uh, a number of different locations that are difficult to find. Uh, places that you know few people have heard of would be the Chatterbox and advertises for slot machines there and the seventh one in Pittman which had gaming. Uh, so those are a number of hard to find items. And the, probably the best um, one that I have would be the Meadows Casino and Hotel uh, matchbook and uh, it shows them playing roulette on the on the back side of it. And then below that, something that's kind of interesting, shouldn't be too expensive to find, but um, is a wine list from the El Cortez. It's in the in the shape of a mask, which is kind of interesting. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then again, uh, 
some odds and ends, um, some Stardust tokens that were given out. They're actually paper that, that are covered in plastic, but they were given out um, by some of the managers of, of the club. And they're, they're kind of fun to collect. There are quite a few of those, probably 15 to 20 different ones of those or more. Uh, menus are fun to collect. This one from the Last Frontier, uh, Hotel Last Frontier is interesting. Posters and napkins, uh, the Rex Club in Las Vegas, that's a hard item to find, and uh, you don't see many items from there. Uh, handy wipes are interesting, coupons. Quite a few items that are. There's a small uh, batch book from uh, the Northern Club. Uh, show advertisements, uh, this uh, was a table stand that, that would pop up and showed Sophie Tucker appearing in person at the last frontier. And so I hope everybody, you know, walks around, finds something that they enjoy and, and goes, wow, I want to collect that. Okay, okay, these these are matchbooks that I've blown up to give you an idea of a little bit more of the artistry and the intricacies that are involved in them. Uh, most of these uh, matter of fact, none of these are current. You can't get these anymore. You have to buy them as a as a collectible. But like that front, that Fortune Club there, they would give it out as a souvenir, and you'll notice that there's initials in the middle of it that they would print. Which one is that? Point to it. This one here. They would oh, yeah. they would take the person's initials and they would have them printed in the matchbook itself, and they would tell you you had to come back later to pick it up, like the horseshoes uh, photographs. So they would make you stay in the casino and possibly do some gambling. So it was a way for them to get people to come back into the establishment. And the larger ones are the third, are the 20 strikes, 20 matchbooks, and the smaller ones are the 30s. And then these these photographs here are uh, the original throwaways cameras when they first came out with a disposable or to, you would turn the whole camera in. And those are taken and they're blown up uh, by a, uh, I don't know, a paper place, whatever you want to call it, on a one that they make maps and they make plots with. Uh, they made them on that and then I had them laminated. To give you an idea of what it looked like before before the uh, Fremont experience. Okay, so this is, is this that's golden, a golden Goose, goose. That's is golden the goose. same building as the that? The building is there, the Las Vegas Club is there. Yeah, that's the one with the, the cowgirl on top. Sassy Sally's right now is where, excuse me, Sassy Sally's is where I think the Mermaid is now. Is that the name of the one on the corner there? Yeah, Mermaid. Yeah. Yeah. Mermaid, the Mermaid, the Bayou is where the, where the coin castle used to be. <clears throat> and then the Pioneer was there, and then that's the plaza and then the Las Vegas Club. And in these here, what I've done here is I've tried to take uh, postcards of the matchbooks to give you an idea of where of where the matchbooks came, what the building looked like that the matchbooks came out. That's now the now Binion's. It was the Horseshoe. It was the SS Rex. Uh, and it was the El Dorado at one time. And I've taken a number of them. And, uh, there's a friendly club. That's part of the Golden Nugget now. Uh, Club Bingo and the Pioneer, that's, that's no more, Pioneer's closed. And then now the Golden Nugget goes all the way from that corner to that corner. There. I, know. I know it. I know it. I never thought of it. Huh? I had but, push pins. But this here shows kind of, this is kind of an interesting bunch here. <coughs> this shows the evolution of the Golden Nugget. Okay. There's an early shot. And then at a later time, it became that in front of it. That was before the, the big golden nugget sign. And then they put that on there. And then if you notice the front here, it's a little bit different. Okay, then they changed the front again. And then the, some of the clubs started coming in on the other end there. And then they go on to here. You've got the lucky strike and the bingo. And then what would happen is that the golden nugget would start buying these places out. And then they would expand down. Eventually, then the, the lucky, lucky casino was there, and, there was, and then there's a different shot here. If you notice a difference there, and all of a sudden that lucky's gone, and the Nevada Club is on the corner, and then all of a sudden the Nevada Club is no longer there. The Golden Nugget then has the whole front. And then when they took the big sign down, they put that there, but there was no Golden Nugget on it. So then they came back later and they put the letters up there, and that's kind of what it is now.
This is one of the few places that you can see that, the evolution of the building itself. Uh, the flamingo on the strip, you can see that when it was originally the small building, then they put one high rise, then they put the one next to it, then the next to it, and then the next to it. And you can see the evolution of the construction of it. And that, in those ways, a lot of times you can date the stuff here. Okay, now this here is, is the same as the, the main, main Street Station right now. It was original Holiday International, it was owned by uh, Major Riddle. Then it became the park, then it became Main Street, and then now it's Main Street now with California, well, California Hotel owns it. Very good. Very interesting. Yeah. And what do we have over here? Yeah, these are these are black and white thrashers. Most of them are thrashers. Uh, they show the early early parts of the downtown the Fremont Street. <clears throat> the Apache was one of the first. Not one of the, not the first, but one of the first gamblers establishments in, in the Fremont Street. And these are different evolutions of the casino down there. How they changed, oh, you see the, the bowler club sign here, then it became a little bit bigger over there. Here there was no, the real tiny sign. And then you notice the Apache, there was no casino here, and there was no, they didn't have a sign up on the roof. And then if you go over here a little bit more, then they put in a casino. Then the Boulder Club, and then they got a little bit of a different sign. And if you, there goes another one. <laughs> That's okay. I'll get I'll get done about it. Okay. Then, then down here, then it became Tony Carrero. Uh, came out of California when they kicked him out of there. Built the SS Rex in the Hotel Apache, and the Boulder Club changed their sign again to keep up with the times or to modernize or whatever the heck you want to call it. Then it became the El Dorado before it was the horseshoe, and then if you notice, there's an Indian sign up on the seal, up on the roof, the Hotel Apache. So they were continually changing to keep it fresh with the customers, you know, to get, to get them to come in here. Like if you go down on the bottom there, okay, the Northern Club was the first licensed casino in the city of Las Vegas. Then it became the Turf Club. Okay, and then if you notice, there's a Las Vegas Club is there and then behind that is the Pioneer and then further behind that is what's called was the Frontier Club. It's not the same one that was on the strip. The Las Vegas Club eventually moved over to the corner where it's at now. Okay and if you go over to the next one it shows a night shot. The Turf Club then became the Monte Carlo. And then the last one over here in that corner that is now the Golden Gate. That was a hotel in Nevada at one time then it became the Cell Savage which is Las Vegas backwards, and then it became the Golden Gate. Great. And then here's, here shows that Golden Nugget without the, note, without the lettering on the building side. This is looking from the Las Vegas Club in the other direction, towards the Four Queens and the Fremont and uh, Fitzgerald down in that direction. And this is before the Fremont Station also, uh, Fremont Experience. And then this little bunch here. Yeah, that's what I want to hear about. Okay, this, this bunch here, what I've done here is I've taken uh, Life and Look magazines. Oh. Uh, damn airlines. Oh, excuse me, the airlines oh. kind of goofed it up. But I've taken Life magazines, like that's June 19, 1950. It talks about gambling in the United States. And it has some of the mobsters that were involved in it. And then if you go to this picture here up on the top, this is the opening of the Desert Inn. They took all the employees, all the money and everything, and they put it, spread it out, and the Life magazine photographer took a picture, took a panoramic picture of it. And that has all the people that were involved there the, the night it opened. And then, I, and then I went on, here's, here's an old Pete Walker, he was an old dealer, I, I don't know too much about him. And here's some of the stars that were appearing at, at the different uh, establishments. Uh, Joanna Gilbert was at the El Rancho Vegas. I don't know her before my time, but uh, you know, and then uh, Dennis Dar Darcel at El Ritz at the Sands, uh, some more at the El Rancho Vegas, uh, all the stars that played at these different places. And then they used to have uh, trail rides out in the desert where you could go for a, a western type of, a, I don't know, feature or barbecue or whatever they had, a truck wagon or whatever, you could do that. Some of the hotels had that set up. This is that Moulin Rouge that Kerry was talking about, the Life magazine. This is the articles that are in the inside of it. I buy duplicates of the magazines and I cut them up and I take the 
pages and I blow and I those I photographed. That's how old those are. That's not done with a copy machine or a computer. That's done with a 35 millimeter camera. So that, that's kind of old. Here's when Noel Coward made his appearance at, in Las Vegas. He lasted one show and they ran him out of town. Uh, he did a terrible show, I guess. He wasn't the only one. There was a couple other stars that, uh, that did not last very long. And a lot of times you'll see in the early stuff like this that those people in the, in the photos are either models or they work for the casinos. They're usually not customers because most places didn't allow cameras in their casinos because they were afraid of, of who might be there that isn't supposed to be there. So they were very private. And uh, privacy wants your money. They don't want any trouble. So they would, they would stop people from doing that. Here's some more early ones. Yeah. Here's some more early ones. And uh, here's some movie advertising. These are what's called lobby cards that when you went into the theater, these were all around the room. And it would have different scenes from uh, the, the movie. And most of these here were filmed in Las Vegas. The Las Vegas story was filmed with Jane Russell and Victor Mature and Peter and uh, Vincent Price. Uh, Sky Full of Moon was in 1952. Uh, Las Vegas Shakedown. There's Meet Me in Las Vegas. There's all oh, just a ton of movies that were filmed here in Las Vegas, actually. And then some of the newer ones that the newer people might uh, be familiar with, or they came to Rob. Oh, here's Ocean's Eleven. That was the original Frank Sinatra and uh, the Rat Pack in 1960. And there's a lot. There's a lot of obscure movies that most people don't know about, or you can't even get anymore. Johnny Cool. Uh, let's see. There was uh, Las Vegas Hillbillies with Jane Mansfield, I believe, was in it. And then Elkie Summers was in uh, They Came to Rob Las Vegas. That was filmed mainly at the Circus Circus. Uh, oh, let's go to some, some other stuff here. These are, uh, these are books and publications that have come out over the years that I've collected on or about Las Vegas and or gambling. Uh, this is a pocket book. It's kind of a risque one, maybe you want to call it, because of the cover. I don't know what's inside of it. I haven't read it, but it was published in 1960. Uh, this was a Las Vegas survival guide that I picked up in 1982 when I, one of the times I moved here. It told you where to go and what to do and how to how to survive, basically, how to live. You know? And uh, because a lot of times people come from parts of the country that know nothing about the city and they don't know how to get around. So these here came out. They were very helpful. That, that helped me an awful lot. Uh, then there's a casino ashtray book. I don't think they had tape. That uh, Al Art Anderson, I believe it was, came out with in 1994. That's when the price of the ashtrays skyrocketed because he, <laughs> they came out and said how much they were worth. This is a collector's guide. It still can be purchased today. And it's a good guideline. It's, it's out, you know, it's 1994, but it's still a good guideline of what's available and what's out there. And then we can go, uh, those are all books and books and, uh, uh, let's see. These are swizzle sticks that you used to be able to pick up at the various hotels. Just go to the bar, uh, and you could get them in your drink, or you could pick them up, ask the bartender, they would give them to you, or the cocktail waitress, and they would give them to you. And those are basically downtown ones. Uh, there's, uh, there were tons of them at the time. Okay, these, these are luggage stickers that the hotels uh, would give out to their guests. Most places don't do that anymore. Most of those are probably from the 50s and the 60s. But you would put that on your suitcase and take it back home, and it was free advertising for the hotel. And you, everybody would know that you were there or stayed there. And then these are the handy wipes that they used to have in the slot areas that advertised the hotels themselves also. You would grab a bunch of them, throw them in your purse or your pocket, and you would take them home and lay them out on the table, and the girls would come over and say, wow, that's where you were at, that's what you did. Okay, then if you go to here, Okay, you go in the coffee shop, these are sugar packs. They have the names of the hotels and uh, sometimes scenes or whatnot. And the next page you got more sugar packs and you also got bars of soap that they would have in the bathroom, so it would advertise the hotel.
these people were pretty smart back then because it was free advertising. They, they buy this stuff in such a bulk that it cost them very little. When I worked at the MGM, it was funny, out in the back in the parking lot, we had rows and rows and rows of pallets of boxes of ashtrays. That, and believe it or not, people used to take the ashtrays, especially the women, and they would take them and put them in their purses, even with the cigarette butts and the ashes in them. And I would go up and tell them, don't do that, I'll get you a brand new clean one. Because it was free advertising. Yeah. And I used to stop them all the time. I would stop them. They would take and stick them in their pocket. And all you had to do was ask. Yeah. Most people don't know. All you have to do is ask. And they'll gladly give you this stuff because it's, it's, it's free advertising. Here's some napkins. And those are napkins that you could get at the bars. Uh, those are old photos. That, uh, not a very good camera that I took them with. That's why they didn't turn out as well. But they did their intricacy detail just like they did on the matchbooks and like everything else. You don't find them nowadays, you find generic ones that have a number of names of different casinos that they own. Right. They're not going to make one for each individual casino when it's just as easy to make one and put all the casino names on it right. because of the cost. And, uh, oh, let's see. Here's some more napkins. Here's some keys that they used to ha used to give out, used to have for different rooms. That's the castaways, that one in the corner there. Uh, there's the Caesars, the Dunes, and MGM. That's when they had, had real keys. Okay, here's, you could go into gift shops and you could buy this, these items here. Either the cigarette lighters, uh, the ladies' bracelets. They had all, you notice they have all the uh, emblems from the hotels on the strip at that time. You've got the Sultan, you've got the, oh, you've got Caesar's Palace, you've got Sam's Dunes. Each, uh, okay. Uh, Caesar's Palace, that, Caesar, that might be Luxor. At Caesar's Palace, you used to walk in the front door and they would give you a ticket for a free $1,000 spin. And one of the prizes, if you didn't win the $1,000, is you'd get a medallion. So I would get the medallion, I would go round, round and round and round all day long in that place, get all these tickets and get all these medallions. And then I would go to other establishments and get free decks of cards. And I, some places had uh, rain hats and some of them had brushes and that stuff. And I would make up little gifts and I would send them home to people's birthdays. And as a souvenir. And then the money clips. You used to be able to get money clips all over. Uh, the souvenir spoons. Uh, lighters would have advertisements on them. They don't do a lot of this stuff nowadays because of the cost of doing of getting this stuff made up is, is very pro prohibitive. The casinos are in business to make money right. nowadays because they're corporations. They're not individual houses anymore. These are the what the key chains evolved to, the, the cheap plastics that, uh, that they used to give away. Now they don't even get those anyway. You got the room cards. So they've, they've gotten away from that. Uh, oh, let's see, here's, here's more. Every place had four or five different variations, different colors, uh, you know. And they wanted you to take a moment as a super souvenir. It's the best advertising in the world. Stuff. They don't have to pay, you know, big bucks to have TV spots and all this stuff. Yeah. They just have this stuff done. Uh, let's see, there's more. Here's the silverware. Years ago, the silverware was real silver, and the hotels would have their logo on the. Not really intending to have you steal this stuff or take it, but a lot of times that's what that happened. Close? A lot of times that's what happened. And most of your major hotels at the time did it, and a lot of them, a lot of them did because of the cost involved. But, okay, then a lot of them came up with hat pins and tie tacks that, that you could go. These are usually go in a gift shop, and you could pick those up. And a lot of times the hotel would, you would have. Are the official photographer for the club? No, they didn't do this. Oh, but they would. Know? They would uh, have these in the gift shops. You could purchase them. And, you know, if you're a truck driver, whatever you put it on your hat, you're in it truck top someplace and the guy say oh you were there then you start talking about it and everybody just it just evolves from one to the other okay these are maps that you could pick up in gas stations or whatever I've got them back from the 1930s up to the present and if you open them up it shows you the evolution of the city of Las Vegas how the town grew uh, what was here back what wasn't here back then and how it's going and it gives you an, it kind of gives you an idea if, well if a key, casino was on a certain street well, 1954, that street wasn't there, so then you know. Okay, then you know that. Yeah, then you know that casino wasn't there. Okay, so they go all, all the way from, uh, like I say, 1930s all the way up to the present. Yeah. 
And these, uh, that's the trolley stop, which was across the street from the Lady Luck, which I'm not sure exactly what it is now, but originally it was, I believe it was a saddle, Silver Saddle or a Saddle West, I'm not sure. But, and it was open a short time, and then it became a Burger King, and a, but the building was long and narrow, and it was like a, just a, the bar, and then the, the places that were behind, the tables were out in the middle. Okay, here's some more black and white fractures that shows the El Cortez. And this one here is the Desert Juice Bar. And that was on Fremont Street, down by the Fremont Theater, and they had a dealing school in it that you could learn how to deal. And then the, the Fortune Club and the Nevada Club and the Pioneer Club there were souvenir shots that they would take just like the horseshoe and they would tell you to come back in two hours later and they would give it to you. Well, they would figure it would keep you in the place and you would gamble, so you would pay probably a hundred times what it cost them to develop that or make that. And then you would also, they would mail it free back home. It didn't cost you anything. You'd just leave it with a cage and they would mail it. <laughs> nice boy. And this, this is the Miss Lucy's. Originally it was Lucky Lucy's and they had to change the name of it because somebody else had that name. And that is Kitty Corner from the Lady Luck. That is now a parking lot. And that place lasted, I don't even think it lasted for a couple of years. But it was an out of the way place. And you had to draw the people there. And it was hard to do in a lot of these places. So they didn't last long unless they had some type of a gimmick. And if you didn't have a gimmick, then the people ain't going to come in there. Okay, these here, what I've done on this stuff here is these are motels. Okay, when I don't collect it, the gambling stuff, I collect the motel stuff. So I get a postcard from the motel and I get a matchbook. And a lot of times I'll get other stuff, I'll go in and get their brochures and their menus and stuff like that. That place is no longer, that's the Algiers, that was next to the uh, Thunderbird, the uh, El Rancho, or whatever. Okay, then they came up with different matchbooks for different periods of time. They also did different photographs, uh, different postcards. That when you were staying there you would write you know, how wonderful of a time you had here, how much money you made or lost, and you would mail it back home. So it was a souvenir that didn't go with you, it was preceded you or something like that, so you didn't have to carry about it, you didn't have to worry about it. And people now sell those, uh, people die off and they go in the States and that, and, and they'd come up with the long shots, and this is a menu, uh, probably a newer menu, but that Algiers was opened in 1953. It kind of gives you an idea of where it was located on the strip. It was on the Las Vegas Strip. Most of the stuff I got here was downtown, but uh, I just threw that in there. And the Baghdad Inn, that was over by the Sands. But there's hundreds of motels in the city that have changed names. Uh, and there was hundreds of matchbooks for each one of them, too. So when I don't do that stuff, then I collect the other stuff. Okay, here's Wilbur Clark. Okay, I don't know if he was involved in the Colonial House or not, but you got his Tony Martin Golich and Wilbur Clark on the back of it, so he's got to be there for some reason. So maybe he was involved in the Colonial House as well as his other places. Okay, then they, then they came up with, uh, they would mail out brochures if you'd ask for it on the various places on the strip. Sometimes it, seven dollars for two people a night at either the Desert Star or the Circle Lodge. And every little establishment come up with that to get people to come to their places and to stay there. And then there's the, there's the park. It was the, the Holiday International and then became the Main Street Station. What it is now.